Today we're gonna have a learning experience. Some people doubt my giant torque wrench. I don't know why, I think to me it was pretty obvious it would work. You know, if you pull here, you get a click here, and you get torque there, right? Apparently not. So I thought we'd do a more direct measurement. I bought this scale. You hang a fish from it like this, and it tells you how much a fish weighs. All right. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. And what better way is there to figure it out than taking a measurement right next to the source? Get it. All right, I'm gonna put my torque wrench set to 200 foot pounds and put the 250 pound torque wrench into the 250 pound torque wrench hole. Uh, and there it clicks. So that is where a thousand foot pounds is. And then there's five feet to the beginning of the actual torque wrench. And we can measure with this 200 foot pounds of torque right here. How much force are we putting right here to get 200 foot pounds right there? And then what is that force right here times the like five and a half feet to get to there? Does that seem fair? Does that make sense, right? It's the distance times the force to give you the torque. I think this should make sense to you. Though the other one didn't make sense. You know what? I'm just gonna do it. Kevin, can you help me really quick? You're not wearing pants. Well, now I'm more curious. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I can even get it. Sandra. Can someone hold the baby? <laughs> okay, 150? Yeah, 156. Okay, so from right there to the torque is like 16 and a half inches. 156 times 16.5 divided by 12, 214. We're really close, right? So if that's set to 200, that means there's 150 pounds, 156 pounds right here to hit 200 foot-pounds of torque right here. What is the distance between right here and the end of the, God, 76 and a half inches. The moment of truth. Did we torque these nuts to 1,000 foot-pounds? What did I say? 76.5, 994 and a half foot-pounds. Free body diagram my ass. Does that make sense right though? Because this isn't moving. You know what, whatever. A lot of things in my life have caught on fire. I'm sick of that shit. And so I've decided to build a fire truck. So you get like the foundation, right? It's like a truck. Yeah. Rancho Cuco Omongos. Hello? Hello, mister. Hello. Hello. All right, this looks great. What are you gonna use this for? Uh, we're gonna turn it into a little fire truck. Oh boy. Speaking order? One Dave single on its own then one Dave single meal with a Coke. I kind of want to like, I want to do like some sort of like uh, life lesson about uh, doing things yourself um, and how, how you, you, I think I already kind of said do it yourself. Yeah, I'm William. This is awesome. I can imagine it being kind of a, my brother-in-law's truck caught on fire last week on the, on my, I have like a small three acre farm. Gaslight yourself. That's right. Gas. The brake pedal, is on the left, and this is your life. You choose what pedal to press. You gotta go, you get an idea, and you run with it. And this week, the idea was to build a fire truck. All right, this is the engine, this is the hose, this is the water, this is the other hose. <laughs> there we go. Maybe it's not self-priming. Ah, that seems dumb. Here is how is it not self it's, it's a firefighting thing. How is it not self-priming? Imagine this, you're a firefighter. You've got this thing on the back of your truck that's got electric start, electric hose reel. You press the button, nothing comes out. You gotta, you gotta run out of your truck with your funnel. Put the funnel in and pour your, 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 the only drinking water you have. Pull, you have to pull your wiener out, Kevin. Whip your wiener out and oh piss. Put it you in the to, suction. You have to piss into the suction. Oh, no. You're gonna poop, poop on, the, on the fire, oh, Kevin. Poop on the fire. I'm doing great. Yeah, we're gonna call. We're gonna call my friend who's an actual firefighter. Hey, I've got this piece of shit fire fighting thing, and uh, we we got it started, but water won't spray out. Uh, did you prime it? All, All right, tight. I'm ready. Go. I'm ready, coach. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I think so. This is this is a disaster. Yeah, I don't I don't know. This is kind of a different setup, man. Thanks for the help. What pedal are you pressing today, Kevin? Oh god. Gas or brakes? Oh, Gas or brakes? Gas or brakes? I'm pushing the brake. No! All right, we think we found the problem. Right there is the coupler between the engine and the pump. So that's spinning, the engine's running, that's the pump. But nothing was happening. There's no water, no anything, which feels kind of weird. So the way it works is there's this vein or something 
and there's these two eccentric white blocks and this shaft and the shaft rotates and the white blocks go up and down and the vein I think keeps the things engaged and so it like I guess sort of squishes water between the two halves of the pump. I think that's how it works. Does that sound right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take the pump apart right now and figure out exactly what's broken and then either call them and tell them that we're going to uh, make fun of them on the internet or just buy the parts. That's probably what we'll end up doing. I usually don't get a positive response when I threaten people with a bad time. All right, the next step is to take off this giant fitting. The good news is I own some big wrenches. One and one quarter inch. That's a big, uh, All right, good news is I own some big wrenches. And all... All right, good news is I've got some big wrenches. I swear to God, if this doesn't work, I'm actually... Ah! Oh, ah! Oh. Oh. Hey, I don't understand. Is that not the one we're supposed to loosen? This doesn't make any sense at all. Why are there balls in there? Taking that apart. Put this back in. You're gonna pretend that never happened. Why are there balls in there? If you want something and you can't afford it, spend less money, build it yourself. If you want a fire truck, damn it, build a fire truck. I don't care if you live at your parents' house. Okay, uh, I think that the main fitting is uh, like galled. So stainless steel, you have to put some sort of like sealant or some something to, to go in between two layers of stainless because if you get a lot of friction between them, they'll gall, they'll like weld to each other. And I think that might be what happened here because we were really ripping on it and it was not coming out. So I find out my big wrenches are for. Oh yeah, look at that. It worked. <laughs> Just gotta jiggle it. <sighs> Bruh. <laughs> you wanna try? Uh, uh, what are the stages of grief? Uh, denial, acceptance. I'm going through septic right now. Septic shock. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the gas, come up with an idea, hit the gas again. Then hit the gas again, because you weren't going fast enough. Then build your dream. I'm about to bust. I'm about to bust. Oh, you feel me? Okay, I just pried it up. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh my God, Kevin! Kevin, it's totally fucked. <laughs> oh my God, Kevin. It's literally completely fucking melted plastic on the inside of the whole pump. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Dude, it's so bad! Oh my god, it's so Look! There's it's just completely filled with molten plastic. Dude, that is nasty. Alright, well, fuck. That's like this is like three hundred dollars worth of parts we have to buy. <laughs> the cascade fire equipment. I thought this was like mission critical shit. It's completely filled with molten plastic. It was supposed to put out fires, not start them. What are you thinking? I'll give you a glowing review if you send us all the replacement parts for free. Wow. William. Okay. The top of head. All right. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm get, uh, it's Saturday and I didn't post a video. So I think maybe it's Sunday right now. Jeez. My life's a mess.